Shotgun tip. 40 to 45% of long distance relationships fail. It's because there's like five or six different links up on the top of Google's page that you can click through yourself. That's around half of all long distance relationships fail within the first four months. That is insane. And that doesn't even get into relationships that last longer than four months. What about relationships that last longer than six months, 12 months, 24 months? Statistically speaking, your long distance relationship will most likely fail. And even if it does succeed, if it gets past the online barrier and into the physical barrier, it has a high chance of failing then too. Because more often than not, when you meet someone for the first time, your expectations were way up here, but they were way down here in reality. It's crazy the amount of people that go and visit someone that they haven't even video chatted with. Also, I want to really quickly clarify here my personal definition of a long distance relationship compared to an online relationship. There's a very, very fine difference between the two. Long distance relationships are based on people that have met in person, but now a certain distance separates them, possibly because of work-related reasons or school-related reasons, or maybe there was a better job opportunity. Something happened to where one person had to move away for a better career opportunity or better opportunity. Greener pastures. They were physically together before, but now they are apart. Or alternatively, you had an online relationship to start, you did physically meet, and now you've transitioned into a long distance relationship. Because an online relationship is exclusively online you have not met in person. Maybe you haven't even video chatted. This is a cope. Most online relationships, if they've been lasting longer than four to six months and you still haven't made any plans to actually meet physically in person, an online relationship is a cope, a loneliness cope. You can argue with me about it in the comments if you want. If you've been in the relationship for six months and you're still not together physically or don't have a plane ticket book or something, it's a cult. Just not to be alone. So am I then saying that just all online relationships are always destined to fail? No, obviously I'm not saying that. My wife and I were a long distance relationship because I had met her over in Vietnam and then I had to go back to America. I explained the story more in detail in one of my videos, but put simply, I went to visit Vietnam, I ran into her in a study group, helped her out, got her phone number, and then we started dating, and then I had to go back to America. And then we were in a long distance relationship for two years while we waited for her visa, and then finally she came over here and we got married in holy matrimony under the eyes of God and Buddha. So yes, long distance relationships and online relationships can be successful because otherwise the 40 to 45% failure rate would be 100%. And obviously there is no 100% failure rate for anything in life, except for people who think that they can climb to grandmasters. <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding. Please don't, please don't come at me, but I'm kind of serious. So what about the extreme cases? The very extreme ends of the relationship spectrum where an online relationship is the only way that you can have a relationship. Because maybe you're disabled in a wheelchair and you physically can't really travel anywhere and you just have an online relationship because that's the only way that you can communicate. Okay, sure, but that's not you. So I don't think that you're in an extreme situation that requires you to only be in an online relationship. That's not you. If you're watching this video, that's clearly not you, so stop coping about it. So how can you actually figure out if you want to move your online relationship into a long distance relationship? Well, obviously the first thing to do is to ask your partner if, your fa if their family is cool with you coming to visit. Don't, you don't have to ask your family if you're leaving, this is your choice, but it more than likely if you're going to see your partner, because I'm gonna imagine that most of my audience are young men, like me. 
So I'm just gonna say this like if, as if I'm speaking to, to a friend, because I am, you're my friend. I appreciate you. So let's say that you are going to book a ticket and go see um, a girl in Vietnam. Well, you don't really have to ask for your family's permission because that's your choice to book the ticket. Conversely though, you really do need to make sure that the person, the girl that you're going to see, her family is cool with it. Her family knows about it and her family is accepting of it and are happy to see you. It's very, very important that you actually make sure that your connections are tied down and locked when you get to another country. There are a lot of services out there that allow you to book hotels and taxis and everything in other countries. So that's a no problem. You will have no problem finding places to stay if you can't stay with the person that you're having a relationship with, which if you're having an online relationship and you're going to meet them for the first time, I would actually highly recommend that you don't live with them while you're there because the possibility that they could be fraudulent is quite high, alarmingly high. If it was less than a 2% rate that people get fraudulent to fraudulent relationships, then that wouldn't be so concerning. Um, I haven't bothered looking up the statistics for this video, but I'm sure there's like, you can look up like um, average fraudulent long distance online relationship or something. But point is, is that if you're going to be visiting someone, just make sure that one, the relationship, the relationship isn't fraudulent and two, that you've been video chatting with them. You video chatted with the family. The family is aware of your presence and they're cool with you being in a relationship with their daughter. In my personal opinion, if you've been in an online relationship for more than six months, you're probably just coping to avoid loneliness. And if you have tried to initiate contact, physical contact with the person and they're not comfortable with you coming to see them or they're too busy or their family's not cool, they're probably not the person for you. It's unfortunate if that is the chance, if that is the circumstance, but should it be the circumstance and you need to move on with your life and they need to move on with their life, it's not going to work if it's been six months or more and they're still not able to see you physically, in my personal opinion. But that's also how I firmly believe that that's the case because you can't afford to be wasting one, two, three years of your life on a relationship that's gonna go nowhere because even if you were to like be on a self-improvement journey and then you ma looks maxed and you got buff as heck, you know, and you styled your hair and you got dressed up and everything, if you did everything that you could to make yourself look presentable, and at that point, you're charming, you're bold, you're ambitious, you're generous, you're all these kind of things now, and you're still in that online relationship, why, why? I mean, at that point, you could just have a physical relationship in your area, which is so much better. So why? I mean, like, I'm, I'm kind of going on a rant here, but I'm going on a rant because I don't like to see people wasting their time in relationships that aren't going to work. And if that's you, then you need to recognize that and you need to put a stop to it and take control of your life and stop being lonely and coping about being lonely. Please just trust me on this. I'm not telling you to break up if you've been in a relationship for a week, but at least make effort to make plans to go and see someone if you've been in an online relationship, to make it a long distance relationship, to eventually marry them. So if after you've watched this and you've listened to me absolutely dunk on online relationships, and you've been in an online relationship for four to six months, and you still haven't made physical plans to meet, and you still think that it's gonna be successful, if you think that your online relationship is still going to be successful after listening to me talk about how it's not going to be successful, then prove me wrong. Prove me wrong, I'm serious, I'm dead ass. Prove me wrong. Book a ticket and go see your partner physically. Prove me wrong. I will even link an email below. Email me your proof. Email me pictures of you meeting in person after you've watched this video. Prove me wrong. And I'll, and I'll cover it in a v future video. If you've been in an online relationship for more than six months and you haven't made plans to actually physically see them but you're still convinced it's gonna work, prove me wrong. Book a ticket, go see them, email me a picture. Explain your story. Prove me wrong and I will cover you in a future video. And I'll make sure 
that I praise the heck out of your dedication. I really, really want you to prove me wrong. Genuinely. Go out of your way to prove me wrong. Show me up. Do it. Do it, you pussy! <laughs> okay, but no, seriously, okay, so... Anyways, I really appreciate you sticking through this video. Go ahead and comment below if you've been in a long-distance relationship or what your opinion is of this video. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care, man.